In the previous episodes of Van Designs, we cleaned the van, put in sound editing, installed the fan and insulated. I do not know what I'm doing. We've done so much work, but somehow the van is still completely empty and we have no power. So we need to fix that. However, as you'll soon see, this is always so much harder than I think it's going to be. So we better get cracking. I have come up with a strategy. I think we can just use these brackets, screw this into the roof and everything should be fine. The first step here is to connect the brackets to the panel. We're using Vanity brackets that fit our Vanity salt panels and connecting them with the fixtures that come with the brackets. Go big young man, what on earth are you doing? We couldn't park in our normal spot because there was a car there. So Jack is trying to work around this tree, which is a bit of a nightmare. He's doing a very good job. Next, we connect the brackets to the roof. We use Sikaflex to make sure the holes we drilled on the roof are waterproof. Make sure that you stick a flex some plant material to your face. Huh? Very important step. It's only vaguely terrifying. Mrs. Hamstrings will be getting a good stretch. lovely cream wood look vinyl flooring and it fits together with these tongue and groove attachments so in theory installation should be really easy but um everything is easy in theory so let's see how we go let me tell you about this hack that we learned to create a template for these weird curved shapes so that we can cut the floorboards to fit firstly lay down masking tape as much as possible in the area that you want to make a template for the more the better as you want to be able to pull it up in one piece. Then you take a sharpie and draw around the edge of the template where the floor meets the wall. Then peel off the tape and cut around the sharpie outline. That's your template. Next, just lay the template onto the floorboard and draw around the template. At this point, Godric comes along to inspect your work. Then, if you are me, you get Jack to cut out the lines you've just made and you pop the floorboard into place. So satisfying. flooring done, just um, a lot more to go. Because things are never as easy as I think they're going to be, when I tried to install the floorboards around the wheel arch boxes, I didn't quite do the measurements properly and it wasn't going to line up so that this joint and this joint are both flush while at the same time connecting to the next board here. So what we did is make the two ends at the short ends of the boards flush so that we have a straight line to work from to put down the rest of the floor. I didn't film the rest of the floor install because I was mildly traumatized from the unevenness, but it ended up all right. The areas that still have gaps, we are going to fill with Sikaflex so we have a waterproof floor. Nothing is easy in this build, but this is how we learn. Okay, moving on. The first fix wiring is basically laying out the wires. Before we can do this, we need to finalize the layout so we know where all of the connections will be. So while I do the layout with masking tape, let's talk through some of the logic of the van's configuration. The bed is what we're working around as it's going to have a massive footprint. We are both tall, so we wanted a full size two meter bed. The whole area under the bed is storage and we'll put the fridge and freezer under there, plus all the electricals and two big storage drawers. At the front towards the cab, we've got a sink, some storage, and then a pull out kitchen that we'll pull out to the side of the van where it will be protected with an awning. We did this firstly to maximize space and secondly, so we don't get cooking spells in the van. We're in Australia, so bad weather is not that much of an issue. If worse comes to worse and the weather is horrendous, the stove is portable and we can move it inside. I didn't realize this until I watched the footage back, but we caught this very cute interaction between this man and this cat. This is really the best part about working on the street. 
You get to watch the world go by and pretty much everyone stops to have a chat. We've gotten to know our neighbours super well this way. So now we know the layout, let's get some wires in place. Most of the wires are going to 12 volt appliances and fixtures. We've got overhead lights, reading lamps and USB ports on both sides of the bed, a fan, a water pump, a fridge and an additional freezer that I'm threatening to use exclusively for Zuper Dupers. We're also going to have a 240 volt plug for appliances but we'll need an electrician to do that. All of the wires come through this hole and we'll eventually go through the bottom walls into the fuse box. It does look a bit nuts with all the wires but everything will be hidden and tucked away when the walls are on. Even though this video is only 6 minutes long, this is actually over a month's worth of working in every spare moment, researching, sourcing and building when we're not working on real jobs. And somehow the van is still pretty much empty. In the next video, I swear we'll get onto some infrastructure for real this time. I'm going to stop the video there so we can get back to working on the van. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.